Do you like experimenting with new ideas? Then you might just be a maker. Hi, it's Dale from Elephant Memories. In this video, I thought I would try to make mini coral reef coasters before attempting a much larger matching table. It really wasn't too difficult, and it's giving me the confidence to finally try an underwater coral reef diorama table. I am using a high quality silicone coaster mold from Crafted Elements for this project. I started by brushing on 14 karat gold pigment powder on the bottom and the sides of the mold. This will give my finished product a touch of elegance. I filled the mold about an eighth of an inch thick with tabletop epoxy. Cover the top of the epoxy resin with a layer of beach sand towards the end of the pot life, which is about 20 minutes for total boat tabletop epoxy. Now you can add your corals. I made these by drying juniper leaves in the microwave, then spray painting them with purples and pinks. I'll put a link to the video on how I made these in the description below. The gold pigments should hide any bubbles or imperfection in this layer of epoxy resin. So we'll have plenty of time to embed and secure the corals in place. You can see that the epoxy is really starting to set here. I'm just making some random indentations as the seafloor is rarely completely flat. This is a very small detail, but it'll make it more realistic. Let this dry overnight. I'm adding a very thin layer of tabletop epoxy over the coral and on the sand. This will seal the juniper leaves from releasing any bubbles and trapping any dust from the sand. This was probably less than an eighth of an inch of epoxy. We can now add any shells or other items we want to put on our ocean floor. I have some fossilized shark's teeth and stingray mouthpieces that are millions of years old that I've collected from Venice, Florida over the years, along with a few shells. By adding it now, they will all be secured to the bottom and you won't have to worry about them floating when we do the thicker pores. Let this dry overnight. I was originally going to hand paint my stingrays, but while I was on vacation before this project, I got a little bored. So I decided to try sculpting with polymer clay. I really loved how these came out. I went with all species from the Florida coast. The link to how these were made are also in the description below. To reduce bubbles, I thought I would try using a silicone brush to seal each little ray. Since I've never used polymer clay before, I wasn't sure how it was going to react to the epoxy resin. 
place the sculpture on a dollop of resin and move into position. I'm hitting the epoxy with a blast from the torch because I overmixed it and it's full of micro bubbles. I let this set for a little while, then came back to seal the top half. After a few minutes, I came back to pour my last thin layer, just over the sculptures. Again, this is to reduce the risk of bubbles in our little dioramas. Let this dry overnight. I'm now switching to a thick set epoxy as I still have well over half an inch to pour to completely cover the rays. The thick set epoxy is thinner and has a much longer pot life. Not only can I pour a larger volume, but it will also have a less chance of trapping bubbles, leaving everything crystal clear. I'm slowly pouring over the sculpture all the way to the top of the mold. Now leave this in the mold for at least two days to really set. Time to remove from the mold. I forgot to film the final part, but I did a light sand to smooth the edges, and then I did a very thin, clear finishing pour for a flawless look. And here's the final pieces. I'm so happy with how these turned out. From the side, you can see where I went from the tabletop to the thick set, but that's why we're experimenting small first. For my table, I'll stick with just the thick set. I hope you enjoyed this and you're inspired to do your own experimenting. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to help us out and see more fun DIY projects like this. See you next time.